All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are taking a look at another fun and interesting mod, this time in the form of the USI Colonization System. And oh boy, I've been meaning to make a video on this for quite a while now, but just have not had the time because this is just such a complex mod. Uh, but thankfully recently I've had a little extra time to really dive into it and try and figure the whole darn thing out because it is complicated, but man is it worth it. Now essentially uh, this uh, mod is a combination of two mods made by Rover Dude, the first of which was the original modular colonization system and then eventually also the orbital colonization system were brought together and made into the USI or Umbra Space Industries colonization system. And what this adds into the game is an end game colony system for you to exploit the resources of the entire solar system. And the whole point of the colonies uh, is to become self-sufficient. Now, you're supposed to have TAC life support mod installed as well. It's sort of encouraged to keep things difficult. Uh, because, of course, a big part of the mod is the creation of oxygen and food, etc. to keep your Kerbals alive. Uh, but I, I do not have that installed because, quite frankly, all my Kerbals would be dead because my colonies so far have not been all that successful. But uh, let's, let's head on into the VAB to take a look at all the various parts that this has to offer, including some new parts. One of the reasons I finally got around to making this video is because this past week saw a pretty large update to the mod so we've got a few new parts and uh, the vast majority of the parts for this mod live here under utility let's actually grab a stay put Nick real quick and head back over to utility so we can uh, actually have all of these popped up and uh, basically the vast majority of things as I said live here in utilities on this page this page and also this page. And we also have two different devices over here on science, which uh, we'll actually go over those first because, well, it is just two parts. And uh, what these are for, uh, well, basically the... Probably a good thing to explain the point, as I said, for the mod is to make self-sustaining colonies. And to do that, you need to exploit the resources, again, as I said, of the solar system. And that includes minerals, soil, and various things like that, and of course, being able to find water on different planets, hopefully. And those allow you to make your colonies self-sufficient, both in the fact that they, with soil and water, you can use those to grow food and create oxygen, and with minerals, you can use those to actually extend your colony. It, it, the modular colonization system is designed so that not only could you send up rockets from here, but also eventually, once you have a colony built up well enough, you can build out the colony there in situ, there at the colony site. And to actually find a good colony site, you need these two scientific devices. The first is the planetary survey camera, which uh, allows you to find likely deposits of various crustal resources. And uh, it's uh, you know, a nice little small camera, not, not too big. Make a satellite out of one of these things, send a probe through the solar system to find all the nice spots for colonies. Nice little, uh, actually, let's see it deployed. There we go. Beautiful little deployed scanner. Love it. And then the other is a Scanomatic Soil Sample System, which is used basically to uh, get the makeup of the soil on whatever planet you, uh, you're on. For uh, So hopefully you can get the soils you want and need for your uh, colony efforts. Now, if we head back over to Utility, where, again, the vast majority of things lie, uh, uh, we're going to go over all these parts real quick and then kind of try to explain how it all fits together. So the first part we have here is the f Inflatable Agricultural Module, which is a required module for the aeroponics module down here, and that allows you to essentially 
grow plants. It's where you actually grow the plants for the aeroponics module. Then you have an assembly plant, which essentially is used to make recyclables and uh, equipment such as computers, robotics, etc. Then we have a bio lab, which uh, takes in substrate, that soil that you gather, as well as other parts to create water, biomass, carbon dioxide, etc. Uh, the colony control center, which is the nerve center of your entire colony. You have to have a colony control center for your colony to even work. Uh, th there's no way around that. You must have it on your colony mission. So it should probably be one of the first things you send up. And then we have a docking port here, which is, well, a docking port. There's really not much to it there. Uh, then a uh, ore and substrate drill, which uh, if we bring this baby out, it's pretty fun. I love this drill. And there it goes, and that will gather you, well, as it says, ore and soil substrate. We also have a water and minerals one as well, which gathers water and minerals. And then over here, we have three different expando tubes, and these are used to uh, basically fit your different modular colony pieces together. You can use them, uh, as you can see here, they come in different shapes and sizes, and we have the three different versions. And, of course, then we have the fabrication module, which uh, brings in polymers and chemicals and outputs plastics and recyclables. The modular factory, which takes then takes those plastics, as well as other things, to make computers. Uh, the aeroponics module, as I said earlier, is uh, used with the agricultural module to actually create biomass and oxygen from your carbon dioxide, water, compost, etc. Then we have an inflatable habitation module, which is simply a habitation module. It is used in conjunction with the Kerbitat here, which oh, thankfully is the next one, which uh, brings in biomass and turns it into food, which of course then your Kerbals consume. We then have a machine plant that takes the electronic parts that are created by the ooh, the modular factory and then turns those into advanced machinery. Uh, we then have the MKS integrated modular base, which is, well, essentially a lander base. And it's pretty awesome if we just deploy that baby right there. Oh, I love it. Look at that. It's just heavy duty, nice and large, has uh, ports for you to connect other bits and bobs onto your colony with. It is very handy. Uh, then after that, we have the power distribution unit, which is used, well, as it pretty much explains. It's a power distribution unit. It makes sure everything in your colony is powered. We then have one of the new modules in the recent update, the Pathfinder module, and this uh, basically sends up your colony effort with additional life support. So we bring that out there and click on that. We can fill it. It comes equipped automatically with patch kits, repair kits, replacement parts, food, water, and oxygen, but you can also add other things. Essentially, this is a storage module for getting your colony started. Uh, it doesn't hold a whole lot of materials, but it's a nice compact size that isn't too huge and unwieldy as some other storage modules are that we will get to in a moment. Uh, such as the radial supply tank. This thing is freaking massive. And it only can, uh, can hold oxygen, water, and food. Though, of course, we can change the textures to waste, wastewater, carbon dioxide, or the patch kits, repair kits, replacement parts, and recyclables, etc., etc. So we can just move those along and even do it for individual ones. Like, we've got 1,200 ore there and just keep changing it to whatever it is that you're wanting to send up to your colony. So that is what you can use to either send up a whole lot of resources or a uh, with your colony or in separate supply missions. Let's pop that off there. We then have the mobile refinery, which uh, creates polymers, etc., from the substrate that you bring in. The mobile repair shop, which creates replacement parts from modular parts and robotics that are created by these other bits and bobs. We then have the Kerbitat Colony Tube, which is used of, to connect the different MKS modules. And actually, if we pop this down, we can just pop on 
this right there so you can see it. It is just a nice little tube to connect and, of course, can be illuminated if you so desire. Let's just pop that off. And then we have the Science Lab, which is, I believe, another new addition. Hold on a second. Let me look at my other monitor over here. Uh, I believe this was, yes, a new module added. The Science Lab essentially functions the same as the already in-game Science Lab, but it fits in with the whole colony atmosphere with all of these other modules. And also it, uh, oh, hold on, let me read this over here with a, uh, it has the same functionality as the stock science lab, but in the orbital colonization slash modular colonization form factor with a greater mass combined with a better transmission rate. And that is what you get out of this rather than using, say, the mobile processing lab. And uh, yeah, it is a quite a useful and of course fits the form factor, which I actually haven't popped one of these out yet. Let's pop that under the stay put Nick and then pop under it our lovely integrated modular base. And this is essentially what each of the modules of your colony will look like. It'll have the main module up here, then your base down here. And uh, yeah, I love the look of these things based off of a NASA design for a potential future Mars mission. I really love it. Now uh, then of course we have more parts to go through, many, many other parts. Now with storage, we have these inflatable logistics modules. And these aren't meant to carry resources with you to your colony, they're meant to collect the resources once you're there. They are lovely little inflatable bits, there we go, which unfortunately we can't actually deploy it here in the VAB, which I guess makes sense, because these are meant to be deployed once you make it to your destination. And each one of these different modules, which I love the look of, they have a great texture, which will show you what it actually is there. And uh, these inflate into a large storage container, basically. And they're separated into different logistics modules. So this one is for life support. We then have another one here for mining and agriculture, I believe. And then the MEP, which uh, stores various computer equipment, I believe. And then the ILM for refining, the uh, an equipment one, a manufacturing one, and a refueling one. I'm actually going to grab this one real quick just to double check. Oh, yeah, it's for all the different modules that you extend onto things. Now remember, as I said, you can build things in situ once you are in the colony. And uh, basically this one will help store those different components that you need for uh, you know, your different extensions that you build onto your colony. And then we have the large storage tanks. As I said, we have this new Pathfinder or Pioneer module, which is just the basic bog standard necessary equipment to get your colony going. Then we also have these much larger storage tanks, as you can see here. <laughs> Dear God, look at the size of these things. And they come in different varieties for whatever it is that you are needing. So either the MEP, life support, refining, mining and agriculture, equipment, and manufacturing. And finally, a part of the modular colonization system, we have this workspace module, which is an interesting one. It is kind of a half-sized module. And I, oop, nope, didn't actually mean to go over there. It's half the size of the uh, main modules. And what this one does is it uh, basically increases the productivity. Uh, it gives additional workspace for your people to work. And it's, it's a useful little module and does not take up much room at all. And of course, oh, hey, I did not realize you could turn on the lights there. That is wonderful. But okay, now, <laughs> now, that was all the stuff that was with modular colonization. That's the things that's meant for the surface of planets, moons, etc. We then have the exact same stuff for orbital use. So we've got the orbital, uh, let's deploy this, the orbital agricultural module, which is just beautiful. Then we have these same assembly plants, bio labs, uh, module caps, just, just for connecting things, the colony control center, uh, basically all of the exact same modules that you had up here, just in different forms, including instead of the habitation module, we've got this awesome habitation ring, which is just ginormous. Oh my God. Let's, there we go. 
zoom out for there, and that is where your Kerbals live. It's wonderful. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, all of it comes in the same flavors as the various bits and bobs for the modular colonization system, including an inflatable workspace, which is just glorious. I'm probably going to have to put it down here, aren't I? Oh, rotate. There we go, and deploy that. I absolutely love these inflatable modules. They are glorious. Uh, but yes, so... Basic explanation, I kind of got into it a little bit as we were going through all of these things. Essentially, you use these to gather the raw materials. They're then processed in such a, areas like the mobile refinery. And those the refinery then creates the raw materials for you to make polymers, which then get turned into plastics here in the fabrication module. And then those plastics go down to... Ah, yes, the modular factory, which creates computers. And then those computer parts go to the machine plant, uh, where you make advanced machinery. And then they go to the... Oh, oh where'd, they, where'd we go? <laughs> I'm a little lost. Uh, also, parts go here to the mobile repair shop to make repair uh, replacement parts. And etc. It's Oh, and the assembly plant, finally to uh, take those computer modular parts and all of those and the replacement parts you built down here to actually assemble them into MEP the laboratories, recyclables, etc. And then also the water and substrate gets turned into different uh, resources such as water, biomass, carbon dioxide here in the bio lab, which are then used in the aeroponics bay to create more biomass, oxygen for you to breathe, which are then put over to the Kerbitat for your Kerbals to breathe and the biomass turned into food. All of these things just one after another adding on to the colony to make it all self-sufficient. Uh -huh. And that, that that's sort of the bog standard basic explanation. It is way, way more complicated than that and there are lengthy facts and walkthroughs for how to put these together. But... Let's actually take a look at two that I have built that kind of work. Kind of. The first is the orbital colony that I made earlier today. And let's, oh boy, let us accelerate time real quick and get back into the sun so we're not just here in the dark. Oh, uh, it was in the sun when I first set it all up. Unfortunately, not now. But here we go. Basic colony system. I did make a few mistakes. This is one of the inflatable storage modules, which we have compost, biomass, water, minerals, ore, and substrate in. And unfortunately, I have two more inflatable modules here and here. But I, um, as you can see, I built them far too close to these solar panels, so those don't work. But we do have our colony control system here. We have enough resources for our Kerbals to live off of in here. And we can't really do any expansion, though. We then have our aeroponics module and our uh, agricultural module here producing the biomass and oxygen we need. A Kerbatat, which uh, over here is... Ooh, compost or full there. Nice, nice. Currently inactive. And, uh, yeah, we then have down here... Our power distribution unit, we have an inflatable workspace, and of course our habitat ring. Now amusingly, these parts such as this is the habitat ring, they do have an internal view, but it's just uh, the lander can just kind of chucked into the side of it. So not exactly the best, but it, it does work. Now down to the basics of your actual colony. Uh, there are various things that must be done. You can't just put up the modules into space and hope for them to work. You actually have to activate certain things. Now you can do them in one of two ways. Either go to the individual modules and say for this one, and the Kerbatat, you really do need the composter and the habitat activated. They currently aren't. We can turn those both on. They'll use power and resources and do their job. And we also have this, a governor here, which if you don't have this on, uh, basically, they'll just keep on working and working and working up to 250% efficiency. But that will mean your resources run out faster and they use a lot more power. But you can turn on the governor, which we just did, to limit them to 100% efficiency. So they can't go above that. It helps you make sure that your resources last longer. But if, say, you're in an emergency, you really need resources quick, you can turn off the governor and it goes up to the 250 
Uh, then we also have uh, down here, we have the aeroponics module where we need to actually activate the greenhouse, activate the air filters, activate the purifier again so that all of these different parts can function properly. Let's turn the governors all back on for these. And then, of course, uh, the power distribution. It's just working. And we've... Oh, God, where's my... Yes, the, the command pod. You have to actually activate command for it to function as well. Uh, then the power distribution system. Oh, it does need to be activated. Never mind. Make sure that is active so <laughs> everything is functional. And this should be a functioning colony. Granted, it has no way of gathering new resources, so it eventually will run out of things. Uh, now, besides individually clicking on all of these, you do also have this station manager button here in the uh, toolbar that you can click, and it's quite fun because you can look at all the parts and activate and deactivate them from inside this interface here. Uh, it's, it's quite useful, so you have all those different options, like we can deactivate the colony control center now that we have it on we could shut it down and then we also can see the consumption of resources which i don't know if it's working i have seen stuff here before uh, perhaps it's just not all functioning properly here i may have built a crappy crappy base uh then the balance of, of different things so right now that is how much charge it's using per day and then a list of all of the resources that we have. It's a very, very useful bit of uh, GUI, I guess, for you to have a user interface, rather. And it, it makes it a lot easier for activating everything so you're not going to each colony module individually, turning it all on. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, this orbital colony. It, fun it functions, I believe, just not well. So let's head back to the Space Center and take a look at another colony that I've actually built on the moon. And this one also should be functional. Should be. <laughs> like I said, I'm still learning this myself. Oh my, oh boy, that was interesting. The colony wasn't completely settled on the ground. That's not good. But all right, so let's, well actually let's use this up here. Go to parts. We will activate, 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 activate. There we go, we've got uh, command activated, PDU activated, should all be good. And of course, if you don't remember which one's which, you can click uh, the highlight and you can see that the aeroponics module has been highlighted and then of course unhighlight to turn it off. Uh, oh my, a lot of electrical charge being used on this one as well. And these, as I said earlier with the logistics modules, this is what they look like when they are inflated. So you can see we've got a crap load of resources there. And this one, if we deploy it, we can then fill it with resources too. Ah, oh, I love those inflatable modules. They are just glorious. Over here, we've got the habitation module here. Let's turn on its light so it's illuminated. The inflatable agricultural module, and uh, it, et cetera, et cetera. We do have a drill which we can deploy, so let's do that. Oh boy, there we go, deploy that drill. And we'll have this one extract water. And this one extracts substrate because that's what I'm set up for. I cannot handle ore on this base. Or, uh, oh god, what's the other one that this can handle? Why am I forgetting? Minerals, there we go. So we can't do substrate or minerals on this. Or no, ore or minerals. Ore or minerals, there we go. I would have to expand upon this colony and bring in things like the refinery, uh, the different factories, etc. to actually make use of those. But this is a should be at least a functional colony life support wise and yeah it's it's glorious i really love this whole mod and again it's sort of a end game type mod uh, the thinking being especially in like career mode that this is the what your ultimate goal is to go and colonize all over the solar system and uh these control modules, oh, where is the control module? There we go, can own, can control up to 30 different modules. You can't have any more than 30, I believe. So your each of your colonies could essentially be a sprawling 30 module large colony on your various planets, which is just awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that is the, the very basics 
of how this whole mod works, the parts that you have available. Uh, like I said, not a full tutorial because this is far too complicated to try and explain in a short video. You need many, many videos to do that. Uh, but yeah, so that is going to be it for this episode. If you guys would like to check out this mod, you can take a look in at the description and uh, just follow the link. I will also include the link to the wiki for this because, again, there's a lot of information about this mod. And so uh, I'd like for you guys to get all of that information so you're not lacking in anything. And yeah, I hope you do check this out for yourself. Even though it is complicated, it is also extraordinarily fun. And uh, of course, I hope you all have also enjoyed this video and that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.